this. <laughs> Why do you do all this? It's Rest my line of work. It's your line yeah, of work? Yeah, I've been doing it for 13 years. Is it a good line of work? Well, I always say it's about the working. It pays, does it? It certainly does. How did you get started? Actually, the BBC. Do, do you have to keep talking like that all the time? Can you keep that <laughs> yeah, up? I can't keep it Go up, on, yeah. you get it, you better, you know, you're on trial now. No, actually, the uh, program called Omnibus, by the BBC, we're looking for a bogart to do a sketch to introduce the program. It was about 12 years ago. And somebody saw a picture of me and asked me to do it. But you've gone to more extreme lengths, haven't you, than other people here? You've had operations and all the rest to make you more... Well, I've had a hair transplant, all the fronts transplanted. But that started before Bogart. Oh, you were doing that, that anyway? Vanity. That was just yeah. sheer vanity. <laughs> that was vanity. Well, that's a good enough reason. Yeah. Any, that's the only thing you've done. No, no, I had my nose narrowed slightly. Now, what was that? Was that Everybody vanity? says it doesn't make any difference. Doesn't it give you the kind of funny talk as well? No. No, that, that wasn't for that. Bogart had show. a lisp. Oh, it's a lisp, is it? That's yeah. his lip was paralyzed. <laughs> Mine isn't paralyzed. Do you ever... Same question I put to the girls who are identifying, idolizing, dressing like Marilyn Monroe. Don't you ever feel that you've become the person you're idolizing? You're not no, yourself. No, no, you switch it off. You can. Yeah, just like that, you know. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> no, like that, like that. Support West Ham, do you? Yeah, oh, what, what a shame. <laughs> Um, just a bit of an insight into... You can, of course. Into, into, I'm always, we're always into, grateful into for an insight. Mentality. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, as a journalist, sort of someone, you, someone becomes a journalist because they're fascinated by stars and by the star mythology, and you, you think, well, I'd really like to get to know what makes this person tick. And sometimes what you find out is very much, you know, is the reality of the person and not the image. And so you come to, you come to terms with a whole different kind of a person. I mean, I interviewed Mrs. Elvis Presley and learned a great deal about Presley. Um, and in some ways, he was wonderful. I mean, he lived up to his image. I mean, he used to give cars to people who didn't have them, which was marvelous. <laughs> but in other ways, he, he, he was quite a sinister character. Um, OK, let me move on. I want to move on to the people. We've got some people now who idolize non-existent fictional characters, don't they? Where are they? Who are those who have fans Ow. who are... Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> who put the hand up? Who are you? What are you doing here, dressed like that? <laughs> are you real? I'm real. You're real? Yes, I'm real. What, you yeah. mean you're a real PC? That's it, yes. What are you here for? Well, somebody's asked me to come and talk about Cagney and Lacey. Oh, why, there's who you idolise. No, I, I don't idolise Cagney and Lacey. No, I'm a, a supporter of Cagney and Lacey. Which one? Both. The show, Both. the principle of the show, the show. And itself. you're a real policewoman? Yes. You don't go around, where do you come from, which force? Derbyshire Constabulary. So you don't go around the streets of Derbyshire saying shoot, freeze or I'll shoot or anything, <laughs> do you? No, <laughs> no, 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 I don't. What is it you like about them? Um, they're, it's interesting. It's interesting as a, as a police officer to watch the, the theatre, the, the drama, how, how close it is to reality. And is it? In, in many respects, yes, yes. You're not close to reality, are you? Not exactly. <laughs> Who are you? Well, this is a Star Trek uniform from the um, <coughs> motion pictures, um, from the second one onwards. Um, and well, come on, well, let's have a look at you. Well, Stand up, let's have a look. <laughs> what are you, are you uh, an official Trekkie? Are you uh, an I'm official afraid so, yes. <laughs> you are? Which yeah. So, OK, we've got Trek anybody else? Trekker. 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 Yeah, it's not Trekkers. You see, you're showing your ignorance there, Cassidy. Yes. It's supposed to be Trekkers. <laughs> I just <laughs> dated myself. <laughs> Used to be Trekkies, you know. You'll zap him with our guns. You what? We'll zap him. Oh, you want oh, as well? Oh, I'm sorry. No. I'm a Trekker. No, please. You're a Trekker. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to take issue. I get that later, too, yeah. <laughs> I'd There's like a lot to coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd Go like on. to take issue with, with this word, idol, yeah. to idolise. Um, we're fans of Star Trek, but I wouldn't say it goes so far as idolatry. It's what are you carrying all those books for, then? Because this is These are work. all books, well, I can see. All full of all, what, Voyager 19, Summer 87, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I can't read the titles of those. BSFR. He's getting more out here, record. <laughs> You're a Star Trekker, too, by the looks uh, of it. No, no, no. Do um, at the homegrown product, Doctor Who. Oh, you in Doctor Who? <laughs> yes. Which Doctor Who? Well, <laughs> um, I, I, I do. You better be careful how you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid it was your second face, sir, that I really. I really. But, but, but oh, well, so I'm a fan of his as well. Why, what, yes. why are you a fan of Doctor Who? I thought that was a kids' program. Good heavens, no. Well, I mean, it is, isn't it? It's, it's, never, it's never been made by the BBC well, children's department. Oh, is it not? No, it's always been. been it's always made for adults. Always a drama series. Well, I must admit, I used to watch it too, avidly. But which Doctor Who? Because um, there uh, are lots uh, of them. Uh, aren't my, my favourite was, was Patrick Troughton. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's the whole uh, format of the show which I think 
um, and people like to follow because it, it's so versatile, it, it's unique. Does it feel strange being an idol when it's not really you they're idolising, Sylvester? You're the real well, doctor. This is the real mm. Doctor Who here. Well, it was a bit like becoming a pope, really. Becoming a what? Job. A pope. pope. Well, yeah, because suddenly you could be, I was nobody, and the next minute they said I was Doctor Who. That was on a Thursday. And then on Monday I was in, <laughs> I was in Atlanta, and people loved me instantly. I just walked onto the stage and I had this instant love and I blessed them with my wit and they fell about laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, you know, someone like me, it was a, a love. But it was very much like, you know, you'd become a And you could cope you. with all that? Well, yes, except for all the sackfuls of mail that arrived overnight telling me how to play the job, do the depart, and um, welcoming to the... I mean, do you feel any, the, feel any commitment to that, that you, the sackfuls of mail of people who really do like, idle, well, respect you, that you've got to actually answer mm -hmm. them? Well, I do try and you know, answer as many as possible in a kind of a way, but, you know, I, I, I can't do it too much because otherwise I wouldn't be able to learn the lines and try not to bump into mm. the monsters. David, are, are you the, 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 the character now? Are you doing it now? Yeah, I've been given the role, yes. Right. As of how long have you been doing it? Um, I did it for this season, about uh, 14 weeks. Right. Now, uh, just familiarize me a little bit with the, the show. Uh, as I come from America, um, it wasn't... <laughs> it wasn't sure. It carry wasn't on. Big. Carry no, on. No, no, yeah. I just need to... You're a fan, <coughs> aren't you? I, no, I want to know one thing. Uh, you. You haven't had the other side of not being Doctor Who, right? You've only had this side of it, where you've discovered just how wonderful it is to be this character and have people recognize you and be a fan of the show and the character that you play. How do you feel it's going to affect you when you no longer are that character and you are who you are? Well, I don't know, really. I mean, I've met uh, the other living doctors, mm. uh, a few of them anyway, in America, because yeah. they're very big over Well, let's there. ask Louise that, because Louise and, uh, was Doctor Who's assistant. They, Louis, they live Louise, with it. Louise Sorry, is just, here. How, does, how would you answer, David? Well, this, I did it 12 years ago. I was like the assistant right. in this thing. Right. And it's, uh, you I were still the get savage, weren't you? you were, yes, you were the savage. Was <laughs> savage from another planet. You, you yeah. saw people who, who remember you only as that character? No, not so much now. I've done a couple of other series here since, I which see. has knocked the image on the head a bit. But in America, it's on its 10th rerun in L.A. Really? So they're just seeing it freshly for the first time. But Americans go, I mean, they're crazy. They're mad. They're, mm. Their main... <laughs> their main... <laughs> Aren't they, though? <laughs> Aren't they, though? <laughs> they are. Well, they're crazy Americans. God love them. <laughs> but they ask. They ask... Uh, one question I always get asked at conventions in America is, uh, what's the difference between the English fans and the American fans? And you say, the Americans are lunatics. And what is more, no, listen, what is more, that gets a standing ovation over there. What is more, they enjoy being told that they're lunatics. What do you mean when you say they're lunatics? They're more extra. They're just great, yes. And yes. when they're bored, they show it, and what, when they enjoy it, they examples. show it more. Give me examples. Doing Shakespeare over in No, 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 Doctor Who. Yeah. Doctor Who, in no, relation this, to I'm Doctor Who. I'm giving you an example. If you, yeah. if you do Shakespeare over there, they, um, you can hear yawns in the audience a lot of the time. <laughs> seat backs going up. <laughs> but if you do something that they really like, no, then no, they're going to. Well, you can't because I'm asking Louise first. Thank you. Go on, Louise. Go on. No, hang on a minute, please. There is, there's 40 other people who want to speak. You've had two goes. Louise, go on. Go on, Louise. Americans are Star Trek creators. We're a Star Trek nation. And you try to take everybody else's speaking time as well. <laughs> Louise, finish what. <laughs> finish what you're saying. Just that when they're absolutely delighted with something, an, an English person will. I mean, I'm generalizing yeah. now, but an mm. English person is going to show their appreciation not as effusively as an American. Mm. Fred, what do you think of all this idolatry? I mean, is, it, is, it, is there any harm in any of this? Um, I don't think there's any harm. I think we're dealing with a fantasy realm. I think fans are kind of consumer mystics. I mean, is David Cassidy David Cassidy? I mean, is well, David Cassidy a madman <laughs> who thinks he's David Cassidy? You know, I mean... That there is a certain David Cassidy projected in the press mm -hmm. who does, just doesn't exist. Would you agree with that? I, I would totally agree with that. That's part of my dilemma, was that they built this image up from a television series that I did. The press uh, got onto this being this white knight, uh, boy next door who did everything right, and I couldn't personally live up to that. Um, I felt so much pressure uh, to be so wonderful and to be so loving yeah, and to I be so giving. Yeah, I think the point is as well that some fans can't live up with it. There's a lot of pressure on fans as well, put out by people like you in the whole industry mm. that's bombarding them with these images. A lot of fans have a, a, just as much pressure as the stars do. What damage does it do to the fans then? Um, well, I think it results in quite a lot of obsessionality. And one thing, there's kind of a self-congratulatory tone about this program. There's a lot of masturbation involved. There's a lot of sexual hysteria. There's a lot of delirium. Right there's a lot of actual mean, kind of pathology <laughs> involved. Get the hang on, Fred. <laughs> I, 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 let's rephrase that. Well, let's, but let's, this let's, program. Let's, yeah. 
Well, let's be frank. I mean, people don't really build shrines in their living rooms to people who have a su supposed talent as pop stars. You're However right. supposedly talented they are, it's sexual. It's You're hilarious. Right. It's Is that madness. right, you lot? No. Is it? No, no, you all? No. Who's going to... Anybody agree with that? No, you, uh, no, you can't. I want somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, no, what I think is, is um, idolising fans, right? It's, it's like it groups people together, like football teams. Yeah, I mean, people, totally. people love um, football players and so forth. But, like, it's a unity between people. Mm -hmm. There's a public mm. side of it, yes, yeah. but there's also a very private side of it. Mm. And a lot of teenage girls or young girls, they actually, and, and this really relates to David Cassidy too, they actually discover their own sexuality in relation to a star who's pinned on their bedroom wall. And those are the kind of fantasies they have. They also discover their own personality that way. And the star often becomes more real to them um, than their friends do, or is their boyfriends do, or their family. Is that harmful, Doctor? Well, it, it is not necessarily harmful. We all idolize people in our life. Children <coughs> idolize parents and teachers. And but the uh, degree, I mean, Fred has said it he said some terrible things about people here. Is that, is that, not, is that not harmful? I'm sorry, love. I, I, know you th I know you think you know the whole subject, but I've got 40 people here who... I've got 40... I've got... Uh, she, do you think she should speak or not? Do you think she should speak? No. We're a democracy. Come on, Vicar. Is it... Yeah, let the church hold. What's it? I, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm interested in what this lady says here, because I want to know how you can actually discover your sexuality and your personality uh, being involved in something which isn't there. I mean, well, let me put it uh, like this. I think wall. Barry Manilow is actually a more credible deity than Jesus Christ because he actually is there. He exists. He yeah, earns more money than that. Jesus Christ, yeah. which in our kind of society is making, makes him very credible indeed. I think we need the la rabbi in on this, well, Lionel. <laughs> I think what worries me above all is that when you've got an, an idol, you hand over an awful lot of power over yourself over to to somebody mm. else. Now, these five lovely Marilyn <laughs> Monroe's, well, they're gorgeous, and it, the whole thing is innocent, it mm. seems to me so. But in my childhood, you know, the idols took a political turn, <coughs> and you had people gelling together because they followed Hitler, Mussolini, mm. Stalin, right. and I remember right. the Mosley <coughs> marches of my childhood. Now, say all this fairly harmless pop idolatry, say it all gets a political twist, or really becomes mm. serious. It becomes an enormous force for good or bad or real evil. It could have been an enormous um, force for good if, say, the Beatles had really gone after the Maharishi. Mm. But it could also become an awful f force for bad, too. Doctor, the man, it is, it, me. is it a force for good or bad, what we've been witnessing here today? It can be both for good and for bad. Uh, idols are, after all, false gods. They are sources or focuses of special attention, worship, and devotion. It can get out of hand. It can be very innocent, as with children. They are mm. worship there, or idolize their parents, their teachers, their friends. But once it becomes an obsession, as was mentioned over there, mm. then it becomes serious. Mm. It goes beyond the sense of normality to something which is morbid. Mm. And it can, in extreme situations, go on to psychotic state. When mm. you have lost touch with reality, mm. you're fantasizing all the time, and you start believing in your fantasy. Are you uh, believing in your fantasy? I certainly am not believing in my fantasy. In fact, I was uh, rather arm-twisted to wear this costume this morning. Who arm-twisted you? I'm a member of the English Civil War Society. Yeah. Can, you we, can you show us? I certainly can. Uh, if you've been arm-twisted, we might as well go to the full <laughs> 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 no, I'm a member of the English Civil War Society, and we recreate the battles from the English Civil War mm. for charity, and to spread knowledge yeah. of that period mm. and, and what went on then, and uh, that the, dispel some of the myths that went on. But what I was saying about the idolization and so on is often with a lot of teenagers, and they follow people like David Cassidy and so on, they, they can't get hurt very much by it like that because they can fall head over heels in love with him, but they're not going to meet him, they're not going to be rejected by him, mm. so they're not going to get hurt. It's their first crush with a sort of safety okay. barrier and that they're not going to meet the person. Alvin, I, I, in the main, would you go along with that? The, if it's handled properly, it can be a positive, I think everybody, everybody's going to have an idol. Yeah. Even, yeah. even the pop fan, sorry, even, on, even pop stars have idols. Who was yours? Well, Presley. Oh.